Jared Anderson is on boxing scene. I've seen an interview. I guess he got a fight coming up. Um, I don't know what's going on with his police chase and shit. He got mad at a uh, top rank for reporting about it. Um, news is news. Um, but Jared Anderson aiming for Deontay Wilder. I'm going to beat him in great fashion. So they've been talking about this fight for a couple of years. Uh, you know, uh, even before Deontay Wilder had that little hiccup against uh, Joseph Parker. And Jared Anderson has made a name in the, the black boss community. If it is truly is one, which it, it is, them niggas fickle, and you got some of these fake pro black militant ninjas over here. But he's pretty much, um, he's pretty much made a name for himself uh, by back in Tyson Fury, in which you know they are prom they promotional stable mates. Uh, they really good friends, it seem like, or you know they work well together. Tyson Fury saying that, you know, he's next up. You know, um, he says he's next up. You know, he said he's definitely uh, going to be the next great uh, great heavyweight. You know what I'm saying? He said he's definitely going to be the next great heavyweight. So, um, And he backed uh, uh, Tyson Fury. He backed Tyson Fury to, uh, to beat Deontay Wilder. And ever since then, they don't like him since he didn't stay on cold. But you know, I'm cool. That 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 in my opinion, that is what it is, right? They mad because the brother didn't stay on code, but they don't stay on code. You know, a lot of them brothers got mad at Regis when the local W boss community didn't he didn't want to do a re, uh, interview with them. They got mad at Bud, you know, when he had a situation with with Tom Bennett and he told him he didn't do no interviews. But you got to remember, he did the same thing that he said back. Early in his career, he wasn't open to doing interviews with the media and all that. And Town, you know, took it in good stride. And now they got a great relationship between Town and, and Team Bud. So check out Town Business Sports and Entertainment. So, you know, I talked to him about that. He said, I wasn't tripping on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Me and Bud had issues, but that, that shit don't bother me, nigga. Like, okay, I, I, I was wrong. Fuck it. How about that? How about that? people, they good people. Hey, I know I can admit that I'm, I'm wrong. It don't really bother me, you know? But them niggas mad because, you know, they couldn't do an interview with them and, and all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, my whole thing is this, bro. Um, they get they they don't they ask other people to stay on code for people that support them, you know, and allow them to monetize their content, but they not on code with every black every every black fighter. Now, had they been on code with every black fighter, I can see where they coming from. But everybody got their opinion. Now, you know, Baby Anderson was walking around with a dashiki on, with a foundational Black American or Pan-Africanism shirt with Dr. Umar face on it, talking about how he pro-Black and all that shit. That'd be, it'd be a different ball game. I'm like, yeah, you can't be pro-Black picking a white man over the brother, no matter how much he paying you for sparring or how much good work you give him sparring. But that's his opinion. You can't get mad at somebody for having an opinion to pick one guy against another guy. They got mad at Cobra. That's where the Cobra beef started at. Because he picked Tyson Fury to beat Deontay Wilder. So a lot of these niggas hating on fighters because they picking against their favorite fighter. And them two brothers wasn't wrong. You know, now if it's just some, they picking them on some hating ass shit, you know what I'm saying? They hating and they not giving valid reasons on on, on who, what, where, and where, and why, and they just hating. That's a different, That's a, that, I, I feel like that's a different beast. I feel like it's a, I feel like it's a different beast. You know, but they got no consistency. They they want you to support whoever support them as far as them letting them come on a platform and monetizing them. And no, uh, if you ask me a question, then I'm a pick. You got you got to understand. A lot of a lot of people in the box community. A lot of people in the box community, you got to understand, too. Um. They scared to pick a fighter because, you know, it's a tight knit community and everybody is pretty much close. It's not a big community at all in amateurs. You know, it's not a big community at all. So it's a, it's, it's a tight knit group. It's a tight knit group. That's you got to understand. So a lot of dudes like to stay neutral and try to be nice because once you pick against one of them dudes, then it's like, oh, the niggas hating on me, it's just the amateurs, and 
these niggas is sensitive with social media coming out because every because your brand matter. You gotta remember that your brand matters. Your brand matters. So um well, let's see what he said. So they put the high speed truck. You know they gonna do that to the black man. Let's just talk about what he said. He said, I was living a life, it is what it is. He said, You can only do you only can do what you can do and take it on the chin. So talk about scene.com. People make mistakes. I made mine. I'm doing what's necessary to make those uh, wrongs right. It won't happen again. It was just a speed bump in the road. I learned that I have to be a boxer 24-7. And not just when I have a fight coming up. He said it I was right after it was right after the bubble in Vegas in 2020, 2021, 2020 or 2021. And he said, I was having fun and still being a kid. I was still enjoying what I had going on after the pandemic. I had a different feel for the sport. I started to see the world and the sport for really what it really is. It's hypocritical sport. That's why I disagree with a lot of things. He said, it's a lot. I can go on all day. It's a dog eating. It's a dog eat dog world as far as the business goes. Then you have fans and commentators where you can do no right. Even when you do good, it only lasts for so long because the second you make one mistake, no matter how it is, you're going to get criticized and it's going to give the whole world a different spin on your career. Now, him speaking on that part of it, that's because, man, you listening to niggas who don't know what the fuck they talking about. That's the problem. They don't like you. They don't like you because you pick Wilder Fury over Wilder. It's simple as that. And you with top rank. So then people just naturally not going to like you. Then you talk a lot of shit. So, that you know, even though black people understand that when they deem they don't like you, they don't like you. Ain't nothing you can do. Fuck them. That's what I tell them. Fuck them dudes. Fuck them. Because when it's one of their favorite fighters like Earl Spence get his ass whooped, then they go, they go MIA. Tell me I'm wrong. They go MIA and ain't, ain't got shit to say. They ain't got shit to say. These, these jokers go MIA. So I, I would tell him, man, fuck them. It's always a different skill for black fighters in boxing. And it's not always racial. It's just to the point where you've seen so many, you've seen so many black fighters dominate that that's why they're always trying to put a Chocolito or New Way. And I'm not saying he don't deserve it. Or Manny Pacquiao at one point didn't deserve it. That's why they always trying to put them above y'all. That's why. Because once you see something for so long and something so dominant, and you look up the you look over the, the top 10 pound for pound list, and something is so dominant for so long, you know what I'm saying? It's just to the point like I want to see something different. Would you want to eat the same meal every day? No matter how much I like mac love macaroni and cheese, it's my favorite meal. I don't want to eat that shit every day. You know, I don't. After a while, I'm going to get tired. Y'all remember that my wife and kids episode when somebody ate this pie and they didn't admit who ate the pie? So he fed them pie every meal, every day until somebody admitted who ate the damn pie? <laughs> Come on, man. So you got that aspect of the, a lot of the non-black or the, 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 the raccoon boxing fans who who got an issue who got an issue um, just, just with black fighters off the rip. But y'all wouldn't read too much into it. He said the biggest thing that they've, they've been telling me is to stay the course and continue to try to get better every day so that when they do pop up with the big names and put me up, put me on the map for the world to see, I'm 100% ready. I don't have to get ready. Yeah, man, like stop doing dumb shit. And we can't be using the excuse, oh, I was young. I was sound like one of them bras. No, you know right from wrong, bro. He know right from wrong. He said Aram has big plans for Anderson. He wants Anderson to face the likes of Deontay Wilder, Joseph Parker, Zhang, Joe Joyce by 2025, being positioned to become the heir of the throne. As sparring partner Tyson Fury has predicted the heavyweight title uh, run by 2026. He says, I feel like I'm moving pretty good. And we on to the next. Anderson said, quote, my plans to make money work for itself after boxing. And then you make an investments. I'm, I'm, I've grown to be very business minded. I want to work without having to work physically passive income my plan is to make as much money as possible i'm very marketable i agree i can talk the talk and i can walk the walk he said i'm not being a showman when i walk into the ring i'm i'm all about the bit i'm all 
I'm all business inside of it. He said, I am, I said, I am not, I'm into being a showman alter, I'm business on side, sorry. So Anderson said he'd like to make 50 to 75 million, then ride off. See, you know, when only black people put a only black people put a limit on their on their money. Oh, this enough money. Oh, that's too much money. How many times I heard niggas I work with is niggas wrong? That's too much money. And a lot of times it's older black people. It's, that's just too much damn money. And ain't never too much money. Black people always think small minded. There ain't enough money with inflation. There ain't no money. When I heard uh, Byron Allen, he's a brother from Detroit that bought the Weather Channel. He was like 300, 400, 500 million, man. That that ain't that ain't no money. He said that that ain't no fucking money. You know what I'm saying? So when he when he said that shit, I'm like, damn, he right. That, in the long in the you know in the you know the, you know the inflation and all, ain't no real fucking money. You know what I mean? <laughs> he ain't lying. He said, I look at the five water accelerated plants of, of earning this pretty uh pretty purses. He said, quote. I'm ready tomorrow, Anderson said. I respect Deontay. I think he's a hell of a punch. Has a hell of a punch, but he can't beat me. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm too much of a real rounded boxer, and I'm going to beat him in great fashion. You know, he said, I want to uh, look sharp and make the best of my opportunity. I plan to make it look easy, Anderson said. Now, he's been saying this, you know, ever since the Wilder Fury, after the Wilder Fury fight, him and Aaron. I'm not sure Deontay Wilder still got it. So, he got a lot going on for what I hear behind the scenes. You know, I'm not sure the brother still got it. So he got a lot going on. He made his money. Um, a lot of stagnation. No, you know, now he ain't messing with Al no more for some situations or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I ain't going to cap. I don't know. So maybe, maybe Anderson can, but if he get clocked away with that, if Deontay Wilder still got that right hand, dude, you know, he still got that right hand. Uh, he in trouble. <laughs> that nigga's in trouble. That nigga's in trouble. So Wilder still got that right hand. He going to sleep. So I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. Aim big, and you know Deontay Wilder and then, you know Anthony Joshua really never had no. Uh, he never wanted to be the man in America. So with him never wanting to be the man in America, um. He never really cared about fighting Deontay Wilder and opening that door into America. Wilder got the door into America. Really, Anderson need Wilder to pass the torch. I don't think Wilder would have a problem giving him the opportunity. Wilder feel like he still got it, you know. And if Wilder stay, stay, stay working and, and stay doing what he need to do, he still can be guys like Anderson. But at the end of the day, where's the hunger? That's the question. So. Um, shout out to Heavyweight Boxing Talk playlist. Check out the Boxing News playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all our notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We go live. We drop video. Uh, financially, you want to support the channel. Cash out. Bell assign. CJ Good 313. Venmo. CJ Good 313. PayPal in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me everywhere. Peace.